galaxy far, far away. So instead, I thought we should start the story with a question, because that's how a lot of science is done. We ask ourselves a question, and then we try to find the answer. Um, and so, I think I was wondering, uh, what is it that I ask myself when I look up at the night sky? What is the question that we all ask ourselves? when we look up at the night sky as humanity, not just for decades or centuries or millennia, but, but forever, as long as humanity has existed, we've asked ourselves one question, which is, where does our tax money go? Well, actually, no, no not, not that one, but um, as you can see on the, on the next slide, um, we ask ourselves, uh, and even on the next one, um, what is out there? And that's what I'm going to be talking about. So, as a scientist um, and as humanity, we've been looking up at the night sky for quite some time, um, and we've noticed a couple of things. Uh, for instance, you've got some boring things like stars, which are always there, um, but then you've got some more interesting things, which transit, like for instance the sun. You know, it's not always up there in the sky, um, and so we can divide objects into two classes in astronomy transiting objects, objects which aren't always there, they might be moving, they might be becoming brighter and then dimming again, and objects which are always there. Um, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. Um, and then on the next slide, um, you can see, for instance, an animation of what you see when a planet goes across the night sky. And so the ancient Greeks were the first people to notice that planets actually shifted across the night sky. They formed this really nice spiraling sort of effect. Um, so that's one example of a transient. And then, for instance, the Chinese, um, in the next slide, uh, you can see some Chinese text. Now, I can't read Chinese, but I've been told that this describes um, this mysterious flash of light, which happened um, around 1000 AD. Um, and somebody saw it, and they wrote it down. Um, and, of course, the, there are more examples. Uh, for instance, on the, this one, you can see up the top there's this beautiful star which has been embroidered onto a tapestry detailing the conquest of England, um, uh, talking about a miraculous star that appeared um, in the sky. And in this case, this was a comet uh, which, which went through the night sky. Um, and there were more things that uh, suddenly appear, um, and they've always been ascribed to a mysterious process and uh, some people like to have this star heralding a new age or sometimes it's supposed to be heralding um, the descent of humanity into something else. For instance, in the next one, well this wasn't the descent, but um, for instance Jesus, supposedly there was a star around when he was born. Um, and, uh, and so all of these events are transiting, but for instance planets, the moon, the sun, um, they all are moving across the night sky. We can track them. We know where they will be at the next stage. What's far more difficult is to tell if something turns up and then just disappears. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, if you're looking up at the night sky and you see a falling star, it can be quite difficult um, to, to nudge your neighbor and uh, say, oh, um, did, did you see that falling star? Except, sometimes, in the modern time, uh, you can take a photo and then you can compare things. So, what we can see uh, on the next slide, a galaxy. It's a spiral galaxy and it's a bit like a children's book. You can compare pictures. On the left hand side, there's a spiral galaxy. On the right hand side, we suddenly have this white light which turned up just there. And because we've got pictures, we can compare it and say, oh, there's something new out there. Um, and so there are a number of things which we know which can turn up in the night sky out of nowhere. Uh, one of these things are called supernovas. It's on the next slide. You can see a beautiful visualization of what happens when a star gets towards the end of its lifetime. In due course, if the movie was working, it would explode and you would be, uh, you'll be seeing a beautiful nebula surrounding this dense core. 
And that explosion is very powerful and it sends out a lot of light. Um, and we can set uh, that light there on Earth and we can ascribe it to supernovas. Puerto Rico, we 
finely detected of Earth. Now this is a huge telescope. This is a kilometer in diameter. Um, and given that we're finely detected with another telescope, we could finally establish that was from outer space. Um, so, so how else could we tell that it was from outer space? Well, on the next slide, um, you'll see a reason uh, why why space has an effect on light. If you are a light traveler, a uh, light particle or a light wave, traveling through the universe, it will be quite simple. You just cruise along, don't need to worry about anything in life until you hit something like this, a galaxy. And look at how dusty it is. Once you hit that dust, you're going to interact with it. Um, and the next slide actually shows you how this works. So you have all of these light waves. You have this very fast one, and uh, down the bottom a very slow one. And it suddenly hit this dust. And the dust doesn't affect the high energy one, but it really affects the low one. And you get this delay between the two. Now it's animation will repeat, so you get to see this again. Um, but what you see is that the high tones reach Earth before the lower tones do. And this is all because of space time. And uh, if we can, if we know how long, uh, how much earlier the higher pulses arrive before the lower pulses, we can say something about the distance to the object, and we can say that something is truly from outer space. So on the next slide, you'll see our solution to find out more about these mysterious birds. This is a telescope uh, array which was built in the Netherlands, I think almost 30 or uh, 40 years ago. Um, and at the time, it was one of the world's best telescopes. By now, of course, it's a bit older. Um, so, and uh, luckily, on the next slide, the European Union saw the value of finding out more about these fast radio books and they gave us a whole lot of money to be able to upgrade the telescopes and that from September onwards we should be able to start detecting more of these birds and finally work out what are they. Because imagine that I had met just one of you, I was an alien, I met one of you guys for the first time. Then I would assume that all of humanity looked like you, all of humanity behaved like you. That might be a good thing, that might be a bad thing. Um, but what we really want to do is see more of these fast radio birds. Um, so I think we'll see more of you to finally establish where they're from. On the next slide, you'll see the refurbished telescopes. They will be becoming operational in September. And finally, we should be able to uh, discover the mystery of these fast radio births. What created them, where they're from, and why we're not seeing more of them.